So let me tell you a quick story about San Francisco. My friend who grew up in the Soviet Union, lived during the fall of the Soviet Union, lived in both uh, Vladivostok, Russia, and Almaty, Kazakhstan. Uh, from there, he's been to Kyrgyzstan, all, all the other stands. He got robbed and his car stolen. I forget in which of the stands. He studied at Cambridge, if I'm not mistaken. He knows like six different languages. And when he flew out to see me in California, he was like, "You, we got to go to San Francisco. Well, he talks like this. You got to go to San Francisco. I hear it's incredible. I got to see it. It's the big, it's like the biggest city ever. And so I was like, okay, here we go. Jump on in. Let's go. So he's been everywhere. He's been to many cities on many continents. He knows a lot of things. And we go up there. We drive for the hour to get up there. We park and we start walking in. And in about three minutes into going to San Francisco, he's like, Oh, this is the dirtiest city I've ever been to. <laughs> and this was in like 2015. It's so much worse. It's so much worse. And so when they're just like, by the way, people now live in pods. It's like, really? Who didn't see this one coming? Who did not see this one coming? Because this is not shocking at all. All right. Let's see what horrible human invention San Francisco has yet again foisted upon humanity. San Francisco City investigators are now looking into the Mint Plaza pod housing complex. Here's what the pod... <laughs> standard multi-millionaire tech bro. This is pretty standard multi-millionaire San Francisco housing. Uh, probably coming in, probably like a cool $1,300, $1,400 a month. Pretty spacious, I would say. Uh, pretty nice, kind of feels, you know, it, this, this is pretty good room. I mean, I love the view. First off, the view's just incredible for this. Uh, second off, he probably lives right off of Market Street. Really able to just enjoy his experience of San Francisco. And the nice part is what, you know, he's paying so little compared to everybody else. I mean, think about all those suckers that are paying like four or $5,000 a month for their studio apartment. I mean, this guy's really winning, okay? This guy's really winning. Uh, it looks like. We first told you about this last week. That's when we spoke with one of the tenants about what makes it so inviting. I actually... I really... I, <laughs> I don't think you could spin that statement more as a, as a journalist than anything else. We talked to one of the local residents. Why is it so inviting to live in a square? Huh? How is it? Tell me by tell me why it's so amazing. You right now. Pushed off coming to San Francisco for a really long time, but it's been absolutely net positive without a doubt. Like just within the first couple of days, I met some of the smartest people I've met in my entire life. So uh, that's the reason I came and that's the reason I'm staying and that's the reason why I'm living in a pod. <laughs> you know, the Silicon Valley show would have easily, I mean, I think I'm shocked that they didn't create this as like a situation already but this like writes itself it's if it wasn't a tragedy this would be a comedy it's just so sad you know really smart people you know that's why i'm living in pod you know we're s brain power okay the brain power in the valley is so heavy I mean, honestly, genuinely, I do feel bad about that. Like, I know that people want to live in cities. Some people love cities. I, I don't blame me for loving cities. Great food. Uh, there's a lot of uh, walkable situations going on. Long as you just have absolutely no, like, life responsibility, having a kid in a city is just awful. Dog water, straight, straight dog water. But if you just are living that single, carefree life, cities are great. Cities, cities are fine. I, I'm sure that, I'm sure it's a blast. Uh, but man, if you're living in a city and to justify living there, you have to live in a pod as somebody making over six figures, there just is something about it that just feels broken. Well, don't know how long that's going to last because the city's Department of Building Inspection is going to determine if developers had the proper permits to build the pods. Mm. AI founders, artists, and retail workers are currently <laughs> in those pods. There's a total of 20 of them, and they cost $700 a month to live in. <laughs> the firm managing the development has not. Oh, my goodness. What a scam. Oh, my goodness. They, it's not even that big of a place. You saw how small the pods are, and they're raking in approximately $14,000 a month. Damn. It's just so, look, I mean, look, this girl feels the same thing I feel. <gasps> They're just shocked right now. Shook. We're shook. Oh.
That is just beautiful. It's beautiful and completely unsurprising that pod living is going to be something of San Francisco's future. Uh, I don't know if you've been up there. I, I, I kid you not. This was in like 2015. So this is before prices started to really take off in the Valley. Okay. We're not talking about anything what they are today. And I remember I was working with somebody and they're like, Hey, guess what? We're buying a house. I'm like, Oh really? I thought you lived in San Francisco. And they're like, Oh yeah, we're buying a place in San Francisco. I'm like, nice. You, you're buying a place in uh, San Francisco. What'd you buy? And they're like, we're buying a studio apartment. So first off, I didn't, even, I didn't even realize you could buy a studio. Like, I didn't even realize that buying a studio was like an option, okay? I thought you rented a studio. I didn't realize you bought one. And so bought a studio apartment. The two, this is 2015, again, 2015. And I'm like, okay, you're buying a studio. Nice. He's like, yeah, it's a really spacious studio. There's like this kitchen, and we got a – and then, you know, like we have this like artificial wall for our bedroom. Okay, okay, you got a studio. How much does a studio run you up there in San Francisco? He lived up in San Francisco, and he's like $700,000 to buy this studio apartment. This was eight years ago. This is a real story someone told me that it was a great deal. It's probably $1.8 million now. It's probably $1.8 million. But it's real. Like, San Francisco is a crazy place. So is this shocking that there's pods? No, I don't think it's shocking at all that there's pods. Um, This is just the reality. It's not, don't stop baiting me. We all know, I mean, this is the problem about cities in general. When they get hyper filled with stuff and you have, the thing that makes San Francisco so jacked up is that like, it's where all the VC money is all just like crushed into one small area. And so you just have like, it's the most dystopian place you will, you will visit. I walk down like I'm going to be going to the next JS conference here in, in a couple weeks. And when I go there, I will literally walk through an entire like a field of homeless people while people sleeping in Teslas are driving by. I mean, it's like Judge Dredd. You're, you're, you're effectively watching Judge Dredd just without the judges. It's the American dream. I, not my American dream. Not my American dream. Hashtag that. Not my American dream. It's extremely dystopian. Yeah, they have the inverse of Judge Dredd. There's no law enforcement or judges. I live in a small city, okay? My city has 70,000 people spread over the size of about 10 San Francisco's. Great place. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, I love open areas. I love that kind of stuff. That's me, though. I'd much rather have some space. I'd rather walk out with a field. Do I ever get bored? What would I get bored of? There's so there's that's the thing is there's actually things to do in a smaller place. Like have you ever okay, a good example is let's pretend you live in a big place, lots of people. Oh, what do you want to do? Oh, it doesn't matter what you want to do. Everybody is already doing it. You want to just do quick pick up groceries? Well, there's about 1900 people ahead of you in line. Oh, you want to go on that nice little hike right outside of town? Get in line to go on your hike to go enjoy nature on your cemented trail with hand guards to prevent you from getting off the trail while you walk in line and people are passing you this way and you're just like, that's not enjoying nature. That's not touching grass. Okay, you're not touching nothing. You want to loot stores? Already hundreds of people looting the stores. Okay? It just ruins the whole looting experience if you can't, you don't even, it's like, You don't even get freshies, okay? You don't even get the freshies. You have to go, you have to like pick over hand-picked goods. Uh, Oh, you want to have a nice little ski getaway? Well, it's going to be about a, uh, it's going to be about a four-hour drive to Tahoe. And when you make it to Tahoe, there's going to be about another hour-long, super slow drive to get into Tahoe. And then you will stand in line for the rest of the time. Every single ski lift is going to be like, 150 people ahead of you and just everything line 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 right oh there are no freshies there has not been freshies in in tahoe in 10 years right just buy a house in tahoe skill issue even then buy a house in tahoe you got crazy traffic you still got crazy ski lifts uh yeah, I don't know. No. Warren, first off, Warren, it's Idaho's a really great state, right, Warren? Idaho's really great, right, Warren? 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 Say Idaho's a great state. I love Idaho. See? Exactly. So all of you Californians and everybody else, you can go to Idaho because it's a great state. 
Go to the panhandle of Idaho. Probably pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Don't go to South Dakota, though. That place sucks. Or Montana. Honestly, horrible places. Don't go there. Disgusting. The name. I is definitely don't come to South Dakota again.